morning to everyone who's joining us for the live stream of the Sunday message this morning, this Sunday, March 19th. Two scripture readings, both from the New Testament this morning. Uh, the first is from Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading verses 36 to 44. Jesus is answering a question of the disciples, and he says, About that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and, and would not have let his house be broken into. So you too must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. And then from the book of Hebrews. We're not sure exactly who authored or who penned the book of Hebrews, but the writer from chapter 10, verses 19 to 24 says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to the God, to our God with a sincere heart and with a full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Heavenly Father, we ask your continued blessing and your anointing upon your word this morning to write the message in your word upon our hearts and souls, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've been listening to me for any length of time over the years, it's pretty common for me to state in messages of how we all need to draw closer to God, no matter where we are in our relationship with God. Many of us listening to the message today, we've been believers for many, many years. Some, maybe some can state that they believe, but really, having made that deeper commitment to draw closer to God. And I'll often add to the statement of our needing to draw closer to God, that we need to do this drawing closer to God by doing just a, a few basic things. And I don't speak too much about what to, you know, they are or how to do it because it's pretty common sense. They should be no-brainers. But for whatever reason, we're busy people. And we get caught up in the world and its ways. And we don't always take the time to be daily reading God's word. Because that's one of the ways we draw closer to God. Do we always make sure to spend time daily in prayer? That's a biggie. This is allowing ourselves also to be used by God to help others. These are ways, not all of them, but just a few of how we can draw closer to God. These things help grow our faith and our knowledge of God. And it also enlightens us to his will for our lives. And there's so much, much more of drawing closer to God what will happen in our individual lives. There's a lot going on in the background of our lives or in our minds. We're constantly being deceived by Satan and his cunning lies. He is the master of lies. One. Satan will always be telling us that we have more time in the future to deepen our relationship with God. Maybe some term it or think it that I've got more time to get right with God. If we'll just take a moment, if we would allow ourselves to be sensible and rational about it, the simple fact remains that we may not have more time to get right with God or to draw closer to him. Just a few days ago, Nikki was certainly almost killed in an accident. 
Yeah, she's here this morning. Almost. She's a good driver. I didn't teach her. But I have to say, I believe that God had his hands on the wheel of her car as she managed to avoid hitting three other cars head on, all in a matter of a few seconds. Life can change in a second. There may not be a future time to do what we know that we should do. So for a vast number of reasons, we fail daily to do what we know that we should do because we think we have more time. We can have our life ended abruptly. We can fathom that well enough. But there's also a time in the future when Jesus is going to return. He's going to rapture true believers out and off of this blue ball that we call home. If we're paying attention to our world, many of us would agree that the time of the Lord's return, it appears, it seems, that it's fast approaching, but no one knows exactly when. Another background issue that's going on in our lives is we think that we've got enough of God. We live that way. We live the way that we want to live. Ignoring God for the most part. But then we find ourselves in trouble. We cry out to God in trouble. It's like we treat God as a, a, sale fa a, a fail safe plan. And I think we can all fathom that this isn't the best way to live our lives. If we would draw closer to God. Make it a discipline. Make it a point to do it. In the ways that I've mentioned and, and many more. If we were doing this, the truth of the matter is a lot of the trouble that we face, that trouble wouldn't exist. So again, we need to draw closer to God and to keep watch. So how do we know that we're supposed to be drawing closer to God? That's a no-brainer too to me. I believe that God is calling upon us all the time to do just that. On Wednesday nights, we've been in a, a study of the Holy Spirit in our Bible study group. And it's a fact that many believers are, are trying to live for God by relating to God and Jesus. But we often, or for many Christians, they're leaving out the help and the power and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In short, one of the things that the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives every day he is prompting us in our hearts and our minds to deepen our relationship with God and to keep watch. Watch what? It's not another series on Netflix. We're to keep watch over our lives. To allow God to show us where we're not living right. Maybe that's why we keep our distance from God, because we don't want to face those facts. We're to keep watch of what's going on in our world and the signs of the, the Lord's return. Yes, Jesus wants us prepared. We can all fathom the government warns us to prepare for power outages when there's a storm in the forecast. Even then, some will take note and make simple but needed preparations. And we also know that others don't bother and they get caught without batteries or food or water or other basics. Many can fathom being prepared, but don't prepare. The reading I shared from Matthew 24 at the beginning of the message earlier in the chapter that I didn't share, and maybe you should read Matthew chapter 24 today, told us of what would be happening. This is what Jesus was saying, what would be happening in our world before he returns. The disciples are asking after he shares all this, when is all this going to happen? And Jesus says, that day or hour, no one knows. The angels don't know. The son, Jesus at the time, he didn't know. That's a whole other sermon. But Jesus says, only the father. And then Jesus goes in to give a comparison. He says, like it was in the days of Noah. That's the way it's going to be when I return. Remember, Jesus hadn't even left yet at this point in time. In the days of Noah. The world was filled with all kinds of violence. And the Old Testament tells us that the whole world was basically all the, of humanity that was there. They were bent on doing evil. And people pretty well, they did what they wanted. They weren't considering if God was pleased about it or not. They turned away from God. 
and they were living what they felt was normal, everyday life. Jesus reminds us, he says, in the days before the flood, the people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered the ark. In other words, they were just going on with their, their merry little lives. Much of what the world is doing today. And Jesus says about those people back in Noah's day, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. Other than Noah and his family, the entire world weren't ready to meet their maker. They weren't in tune with God. They weren't in relationship with him because taking time to be with God and his will, that was interfering in their lives. The flood came. And as I mentioned, it was only Noah and his family that was spared. In that reading I shared from Matthew 24, Jesus says, that's how it's going to be at the coming of the Son of Man. And he says, therefore, keep watch. You don't know the hour that the Lord is going to return. If we're not drawing closer to God, we're not going to be concerned about when Jesus comes. It's not only about ourselves that we need to be concerned about when Jesus comes. What about our loved ones and friends? We're likely more concerned about what's going on in our lives, how we can gain more stuff or more money or more of what we enjoy from this world, what it offers. I don't want to sound critical. I mean, stuff, money, some of these things we certainly need to live. It's not wrong. But it's when these things and that stuff takes over and shuts God out of our lives. When this stuff becomes a trap that Satan uses. He leads us away from God. And he leads us away from the things that really, really matter. When Jesus returns, or maybe we die suddenly because we don't know. Will we find ourselves prepared? Jesus gives the analogy of a thief breaking into someone's home. And he says if the owner of the house knew when the thief was going to come, he'd make preparations. Would we not do the same? He says you must be ready because you don't know when the Son of Man will come. He'll come at an hour that you don't expect him. We can fathom. I mean, the crime rate is, is rising in, in the world or in the Western world, at least. If we knew that someone was going to break into our house, we'd be ready, wouldn't we? We'd have the biggest, ugliest German shepherd or bulldog or something ready. We would make preparations to catch them. And Jesus tells us to keep watch. Watch that our lives are right with God and watch for the signs that show his return can be at any time. As it is. I suspect that many who claim to believe in God are not really sure. That if they were to die suddenly. Or if Jesus was to return right now. Many might say or think. I'm not sure if I would make it to heaven. Is that your thought? This is no way to live. And I think that for those of us who are, are toying with God, maybe giving him a little bit, but not as much as we know we could. I think this is one of the reasons why our personal anxiety for many is at an all-time high. For many who, have, who know of God, who have been witnessed to by you and others, who are warning and they're not paying attention. In the subconscious, the anxiety is rising. If we're seeking God and we're drawing ever closer and deeper into relationship with him, we're going to have confidence in our beliefs and the faith and the promises of God. Our confidence is not going to come from how good or how holy we appear. It shouldn't. But our confidence comes from knowing Jesus has died for our sins. He has saved us. We're in that process of sanctification if we're willing partners with God. And this is what the writer of Hebrews is reminding us of. 
brothers and sisters. He's writing to the church. We forget that. The scriptures were written, the New Testament was written to churches. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, and we have a high priest over the house of God, and the writer says to draw near to God with a sincere heart, not haphazard, with a sincere heart, and with the full assurance that faith brings. What's all this mean? Confidence to enter the most holy place. Where is the most holy place? Is it the church? No. At the moment, the most holy place we can be is the presence of God. In prayer, through his Holy Spirit, we seek God and we seek his forgiveness through Jesus, our high priest. As we are in a moment by moment and day in and day out relationship and in, in fellowship with God, we're drawing near to God. And we have this assurance. We have this confidence that we are loved by God. We are forgiven by God all through Jesus. And we're being helped. We're being empowered by God through his Holy Spirit. We're helped to live our lives for him. So for all of those who dare not draw near to God because, oh, there's no hope for me. I've got this sin. It's a hang up for me my whole life. I can't draw near to God until that's worked out. Satan's deceiving you. Come to Jesus wherever you are in your life. You don't need to be clean before you come to church. Come into fellowship and relationship with God. He'll clean you up. If we tried living for God in the past without much success, then maybe it's time that we finally figured out that we'll have more success at living for God if we'll allow ourselves to be drawn closer to him. Not staying off in the sidelines and thinking, We'll get to God a little bit later in life. As we're reminded from news headlines to our personal things going on in our lives, there may not be a later in life. So the writer in Hebrews says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope. And it's more than just I hope so hope. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess for he who promised, this is the Lord Jesus, he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another onward toward love and good deeds. Drawing closer will mean rather than thinking or being in daily prayer and scriptures, rather than thinking that we'll actually get to it, you know, one day. But we know that prayer, reading the scriptures, this is convicting to us. It's not always easy. Keep reading. Keep seeking. And then there's church life. Helping in the lives of others, maybe being in prayer for them, being a shoulder for them to lean on, as well as a shoulder for us to lean on when, when we need help. Drawing Closer is acknowledging the Holy Spirit. We've been learning and being reminded in our study of the Holy Spirit, and it's not a great explanation, but this thing that we call our conscience. What's it saying about our thoughts, our actions, our words? Because the conscience of ours Often in reality, this is a Holy Spirit speaking to us. It's convicting us. It's drawing closer to God and having, having us being more watchful. When the voice in your head is saying, and it's encouraging us to pray and to spend time in the word of God or attending church or lending a helping hand to be involved in the work of the church or not just attending as a spectator. These things are in part. These things are drawing us closer to God. 
And in doing so, we're more, we are more aware or we are willing to be more aware of what's going on in our world. We're not walking around or standing around with our heads in the sand. But these signs that we see that Jesus warned us of, these signs are present and they're happening. We're drawing closer. And we're keeping watch, watching over our lives and watching for the day that Jesus comes. He will come when we don't expect him. Others have said it, I've said it, but tomorrow never comes. Of course it does. But when tomorrow gets here, what is it? It's today. So if we're always going to put off till tomorrow what we know we ought to be doing, then the chances of, of us being deceived over and over and over again by Satan to put off deepening our relationship with God, this is just going to continue. And it may end up having us not prepared. It may end up having us not watching over what's really most important. So let's not be caught unprepared. If for whatever reason you or I have, we may just run out of time. Because there is going to be a moment in our future. We'll be out of time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, remind us every heartbeat is a gift from you. We're not guaranteed a, this afternoon or an evening. You are with us, Lord. Whether we live or whether we die, we know we can be in your compassionate care. This is also a promise from you. Lord, help us to be more aware of your spirit's voice in our, that is speaking to us in our minds, our hearts, whatever we may want to call that. As your Holy Spirit convicts us to draw closer to you. Help us, Lord, not to rebel. Help us not to listen to Satan and put it off till tomorrow. Speak loud and clear to us, Lord, that we draw closer to you in whatever ways that you, you show us. Help us to be obedient to your Holy Spirit's voice. Help us to believe and realize that you are speaking to us all the time and you're wanting us no matter where we are in our relationship with you. You want us closer. And for all of those, Lord, who, who may hear the message that haven't made a commitment to you, we pray, Lord, through your Holy Spirit, that you'll touch them, that your spirit will commune with them and bring them into saving faith. Heavenly Father, help us to be aware of our surroundings in our world. And though the news and what we hear, the goings on in our world around us, there's not much good. And many can say, I don't watch that stuff because it's too depressing. But Lord, have us be mindful. The things going on in our world are certainly signs of what could be your soon return. So help us to be ready and to keep watch. Lord, we pray for those who have lost loved ones and we ask that you help them cope to heal on these journeys. With those, Lord, who are facing surgeries and, and serious health issues, Lord, we pray for their strength, for their healing. We pray, Lord, for those who are in the hospital and in long-term care, those recovering from surgery, your healing touch upon them and the lifting of spirits for those who, who feel down, who feel forgotten. Speak to us, Lord, where we may be the answer to some of these prayers. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus. As you've taught us, Lord, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessings to each and every one of you and your families near and far. And you know you've got to keep washing your hands, right?